MAT 0018 Review for Test 3 Decimals Our first question is to write as a mixed number or fraction. So we're going to convert from decimals to a mixed number or a fraction. So for our first one, we can just use place value. The 7 is in the tenths place, so we will write 7 over 10. If it would reduce, you reduce. It won't, so that's your answer. B, 6.4. Um, so this one is going to give us a mixed number because we have a number on the left of the decimal. Remember, that's a whole number if it's on the left of the decimal. So we have a 6. We don't have to do anything to it. And this will give us 4 tenths. It's in the first position after the decimal. That's the tenths place. And this one will reduce. 4 tenths, those are both even. So that will reduce by a factor of 2. We'll divide by 2. 2 into 4 will go 2 times. 2 into 10 will go 5. Problem 2. We're going to compare and choose the correct sign. Greater than, less than, or equal to. So for our first one, A, 0.1 and 0.05. You just match up place value if you have both decimals. So first on the left of the decimal, 0 to 0 is the same. Next in the tenths place, we have 1. We're comparing it to 0. We have a difference right there, so we stop. We do not round. We just take whichever one is bigger. So point 0.1 is bigger than point 0.0, so it will be greater than. Do not round when you're comparing. Compare first. B. Comparing 3 sevenths and 0 0.429, you have to have the same kind of numbers to compare. So the easiest thing to do will be to switch 3 sevenths to a decimal so we can match up place value. So we have to do a long division, 7 into 3. It won't go. Put your decimal, take it up, and we can add zeros. 7 into 30 will go 4 times. Multiply back, 4 times 7 is 28. Subtract, 10 minus 8 is 2. Add a 0, bring down. 7 into 20 will only go 2 times. 2 times 7 is 14. We have to keep going because we still are matching in the second position there. So we'll subtract, add one more 0, bring down. 7 into 60. 8 sevens are 56. Now we have a difference. 9 is bigger than 8. It doesn't matter that it didn't go even. It didn't go another whole number. So 0 0.429 is larger than the 3 sevenths. Problem 3. We're going to round to the nearest hundredth. Notice the TH ending. So that's on the right of the decimal. Find the hundredth place. So the first place is the tenths. Second place is the hundredths. It's the pennies place. You look one digit to the right. If it's a five or higher, it would push your hundredth up. It is lower, so it's going to drop off to zero. So this will round to 0 0.2. Three. Everything else would be zeros, and so they drop. Next, we're going to start on our arithmetic of decimals. For addition and subtraction, you write vertically, lining the decimal straight up and down. With our sign rules, you have to decide whether your problem is going to add or subtract before you write it. Because if it's going to subtract, you want the biggest one on the top. So, first we ask, do we have like signs or different? We have like signs. Like signs will add. So it doesn't matter which one goes on top. We're going to write them vertically, lining up the decimal. And they were both negative. You can put that if you like. And now we're just going to add the numbers, keep the sign. The decimal comes straight down. So 5 plus 6 is 11. You have to carry. 7 and 7 is 14, and 1 makes 15. We're going to carry 10, 11. Your decimal comes straight down, and don't forget to keep your sign. 
For problem 5, we have different signs, positive 3.21 and negative or minus 15.4. Different signs subtract. When they're going to subtract, you have to write the larger number on top. So 15.4 needs to go on top. The other one goes underneath, lining the decimal straight up and down. When you have subtraction, you have to fill in any missing spots with zeros. So we have to fill this in. Then we're ready to subtract. So we're going to have to borrow. We'll have 10 minus 1 is 9. 3 minus 2 is 1. Decimal goes straight down. 5 minus 3 is 2. And 1 minus nothing is 1. And we have to deal with our sign. So sign of the larger, the larger was the 15, it was negative, so we're going to have a negative. For problem 6, we have four numbers uh, to add together. They're all positive, so it's going to add. We can go ahead and write it all vertically, lining up the decimal. So we have 7.1, 12.4.2 and for the 5 if we don't see a decimal it's after the number so the 5 is going to line up to the left of the decimal then we can add for addition it doesn't matter if we fill in the zeros or not subtraction it's necessary addition it's not so we'll just go ahead and add in that tenths place we have 6 plus 1 is 7 Bring the decimal straight down. 7 and 2 is 9, plus 5 is 14. So we have 1 to carry. 1 plus 1 is 2, and it's staying positive, 24.7. For problem 7, we have parentheses side by side, so that is going to be a multiplication problem. We write it vertically like old arithmetic style. We don't necessarily line up the decimal. We line it up to the right edge. So 13.4 and 5.26. So it's going to write a line. We're going to do plain old multiplication. And don't forget about your signs. With multiplication, we count the negatives. We only have one sign that's odd. So it's going to be a negative answer. All right, so we'll do regular multiplication. 6 times everything on top. So 6 times 4 is 24. Carry. 6 times 3 is 18, 19, 20. Carry. 6 times 1 is 6, 7, 8. And then we move over to the 2. 2 times 4 is 8, and we also go in one place here. 2 times 3 is 6. 2 times 1 is 2. And we'll go over one more space. 5 times 4 is 20. We have to be also in two places there. So 5 times 4 is 20. We were carrying the 2. 5 times 3 is 15. 16, 17. 5 times 1 is 5 and 1 is 6. Then we add. So 4, 8, 14. 7 plus 2 is 9 plus the 1 is 10 carry. That's a 7. And then count your decimal places. We have 1, 2, 3 digits total after the decimal. That's what you want in your answer. So count in from the end. 1, 2, 3. So that you have three numbers after your decimal. Don't forget about your signs. Only one negative. That's odd. So it is negative. Number 8. Also a multiplication because you have parentheses side by side. This one we can actually use a shortcut because we're multiplying by a power of 10. That means a 1 and some zeros. And when you multiply by a power of 10, all it does is move the decimal to the right as many places as you have zeros in the power of 10. So in our power of 10, we have three zeros. So our decimal is going to move three places to the right to give us 2.51. You could do it with regular multiplication, but the shortcut is really nice. We'll look at it real quick. 
So we would write a line. Do your planal multiplication. Zero times everything is zero. We go in one. Zero times everything is zero. We go in one. Zero times everything is zero. And then we'll multiply by one. So one times one is one. One times five is five. One times two is two. One times zero is zero. One times zero is zero. We have five digits total after the decimal. That's what you need in your answer. So go in from the end. One, two, three, four, five. That's where your decimal goes. Once you've placed the decimal, you can drop any zeros that are after the decimal. You could also drop any zeros that are on the left of your whole number. So 2.51.